Autumn is here. The nights are cold and the mornings are cool and crisp. Even with the summer months behind us, there is still warmth in the sun. Autumn is my favourite season. The freshness it brings is an absolute welcome relief from the summer heat. And the race to get things done before winter provides me with fresh motivation. The last few months have been filled with birthdays, social gatherings and filming weddings. So I am getting a little bit behind in my garden and filming these YouTube videos. I'm hoping as things start to calm down and slow down, I should get on top of things again. The chickens now have a run and my kitchen garden is protected with a fence so when I do let the chickens out they won't go in there and destroy what I'm growing. Fences I've made are simple fences. They're just made from some wooden posts which I got from Amazon along with some chicken wire. I still need to make some gates but at the moment those fences are doing the job I wanted them to do. Harvesting the summer crop is now over. The runner beans have been taken down and the tomatoes have all gone. Unfortunately, the tomatoes have done really poorly this year as a result of a very wet and cool July. I've got very few tomatoes from them. If anything, my chickens have got the majority. The last crop we're harvesting from summer is sweet corn. We've had a few ears from them, but not as many as I would normally have. That's because I was too late putting them out and those seedlings were late getting into the ground. So next year, that's something to remember, I need to get them out much earlier. Despite putting them out too late and not getting as many as I'd like, the ones I do have just taste amazing. If you haven't grown sweet corn for yourself, it's definitely worth trying. They taste significantly better than the ones that you'll buy in the supermarket. My leeks, cabbages and sprouts will be the last things I'll harvest from my kitchen garden this year. Once they are done, I'll start to feed that ground again, ready for next year. There's a saying that farmers look to winter with spring in their eyes, and that's all about the idea that we should be planning for the future. But to do that, we do need to understand where we've been and what we've been doing. So this time of the year is extremely important for reflection. Autumn for me is a time to think about the past, the present and the future. When we think about the past, it's important to try and reflect on the work that we've done this year and the things that have gone well and not so well. The present is thinking about getting things in order so that actually we're ready for the winter as they come and take advantage of the remaining heat that we have out of this sun before it really does get cold. And then looking to the future is about learning and planning. And at the moment, I'm spending a lot of time reading books and trying to get up to speed with things that I want to do next year. There are three books that I'm using at the moment to sort of help me through that process of reflection. And these are really good books for beginners. I still use them even though I'm starting to move away from being a beginner and seem to be getting fairly consistent results at the moment. But it's the basics that you need to get right in order to really succeed. The 10 Minute Gardener book is a great book for those who don't really have a huge amount of time in order to do gardening, as it really helps you just keep on top of those small tasks that really do matter in keeping things moving forward each year. The next book I'm using at the moment in terms of trying to understand 
what's going on in my garden and things I need to plan for next year is the RHS Allotment Journal. This book offers two things. It offers information on each month of the year in terms of what you need to be doing in the garden to do well or your allotment, but it also offers you space to record what's going on, which for reflection is a really important thing. So you can start to see what you're doing each month, compare it to the advice that they're giving you and see where things might be going awry and you could try and do differently next year. The final book I use is this one here, which is an amalgamation of newspaper guides that were sent out during the war. The reason I use this one, because it's about wartime gardening, so some of the advice in here isn't really up to date. But it reminds me of a generation of people who had to, they had no choice but to grow their own food. And that created a generation of people for after the war who also continue to do that in their garden. And my grandparents and uh, my wife's grandparents continue to enjoy their garden and grow their own food right up until uh, they unfortunately were no longer able to do it. So there's a bit of nostalgia in here, but also it's really interesting to see how some of the advice that were given all those years ago still apply today and are still present in the more modern books. I'll put a link in the description below. If you're interested in these, please give it a go. It is an affiliate link. Any money that comes through there does continue to help this channel out. Autumn is most definitely here and winter isn't that far behind. So hopefully you'll come with me into the next few months as I start to plan my garden for next year. I have a lot of ideas that I really want to get done and I hope to bring you along with me on that as well. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're keeping safe and you're enjoying your autumn too. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.